Hello and welcome to this video on polymers and we're looking in this video especially at addition polymers. Now before we embark on these you should know about hydrocarbon chemistry. I have done a series of videos on those so if what follows doesn't make any sense please go back and look at those earlier videos. You should understand what the word hydrocarbon means. A hydrocarbon is a compound made of carbon and hydrogen only. You should understand the term saturated. A saturated hydrocarbon can, has only single carbon to carbon bonds. On the other hand, an unsaturated hydrocarbon contains at least one carbon to carbon double bond. A good example are the alkenes. You should be familiar with alkenes. You should also know how to draw and understand structural formulas, especially for, for this video, full structural formulas, but I will mention shortened ones as well. OK, we'll start by looking at ethene. OK, so here is ethene. Two carbons, four hydrogens, and there in the middle, you've got that carbon to carbon double bond that means that ethene is unsaturated. But suppose that double bond opens up like this. Now, there's a wee problem with that carbon on the right. It's not attached to anything on the right hand side there. But what's, what happens if we bring in another ethene molecule? Well, now there's a problem with that third carbon in. It's got five bonds. But suppose we do this. Okay, now that gives us that problem of dangling bond again. But we could bring in another ethene molecule and flip out that double bond like that and just keep going over and over and over again until we've got literally hundreds of ethene molecules joined together. Right, to show you what that looks like in terms of structural formulas, we start with a whole bunch of ethene molecules like that. The double bonds open up the molecules connect together and you get that. Now I must emphasize that is only a part of a much, much, much bigger molecule. There should be a, hundreds and hundreds of ethene molecules joined together in that chain. Notice also you have no double bonds there. That molecule will be saturated. Okay, now this then has, was made up of lots of ethene molecules. Now, when you see the term lots of, often that can be replaced by the word poly. So we're going to call this a polyethene molecule. Or, because polyethene is hard to say, we just shorten it to polythene. That's what polythene is. It's a polymer. It's a large molecule made of lots and lots and lots of ethene molecules joined together. And there are lots of others. We can do this pretty much with any alkene. But you need to watch how you draw these to understand how they go together. Let's look at propene, for example. There's propene, three carbons, six hydrogens, and there's that double bond. Let's put a few more in like that. Now, as it stands, it's hard to see how that bond there it's going to attach to that carbon there with that carbon in the way. But that's only a problem because I've chosen to draw that carbon atom there. I could have drawn it there, like that. OK, now let's draw the others like that. And now it becomes a bit more obvious how these are going to join up. It'll work just as it did with the ethene, like that. And again, I must emphasize, that's only a very, very small part of the final molecule. Okay, That then will be polypropene, or at least that's a part of a polypropene molecule. Okay, I can do this just as well with butene. Okay, At first, that looks like it's not going to connect together very well, but I can rewrite it like that. Notice that I've... Uh, change the shortened forms there with the CH2 and the CH3. That's just to make the diagram less cluttered. Okay, there you go. That then will be polybutene. 
which gives us some idea how to name polymers then. Okay. So, I've used the word polymer. Let's be clear about what it means. A polymer is a large molecule made of lots of small molecules joined together. And those small molecules, in turn, are called monomers. When you see mono, it means one. So these are monomers. The monomers are the small molecules that join together to make polymers. So the one we looked at previously was propene. Propene can be a monomer. We can join propene molecules together to form a polymer. And that polymer will simply be called polypropene. We simply put poly on the front of the name of the monomer. And we can work that backward as well. A polymer called polybutene, we saw that as well. Polybutene is the polymer. If we take poly off, we get the name of the monomer, butene. Even with ones we're not familiar with, or perhaps we've heard the name of in everyday life, polystyrene. Poly on the front there tells you that that's a polymer. To find out the name of the monomer, you just take poly off. Incidentally, that's polystyrene there. That hexagon thing is called a benzene ring. It's made of six carbons and five hydrogens, and you won't have to worry about that until you get to possibly higher. Okay, chloroethene. Notice this doesn't just apply to hydrocarbons. As long as you've got a double bond, you can form polymers. So, on the right there, you've got chloroethene. It's like ethene, but one of the hydrogens has been replaced by chlorine. But you can form a polymer with that, and it will just be polychloroethene. Even a, a scary name like that, polytetrafluoroethene, that's a polymer. By the way, the everyday word for that is Teflon. So polytetrafluoroethene, that's a polymer. To find out the name of the monomer, you just take poly off the front. And that's tetrafluoroethene there. Tetra means four, and you've got four fluorines. Okay. One final thing, we need to look at what's called repeating units. Let's take a largish bit of a polymer chain. There you go. Again, emphasizing that it's only a part of a polymer molecule. You've got to imagine it going on to the right and to the left by quite a long way. OK, but the point is, there's a chunk of, of molecule that keeps repeating over and over again. A group of atoms that repeats over and over again along the molecule. And it's that one there, look. That just repeats over and over and over. We call that the repeating unit. And that's it there. Now notice we've left a bond either side sort of dangling. That's to emphasize that this is only a part of the molecule. It's a repeating unit. You've got to imagine it repeats off to the right and off to the left, over and over again. But what you see there is the repeating unit. But if we know what the repeating unit is, we can work back to what the original monomer molecule was. Remember, the monomer molecule is always unsaturated, if you're used talking about addition polymers. So all we have to do is put a double bond in that, to work out what the monomer was, like that. And that's your monomer. That is fluoroethene. So that big polymer chain at the top, that is polyfluoroethene. Or again, at least a bit of it. So what should we now know? You should now know that polymers are very large molecules made up of thousands of atoms. But they're also made of small, unsaturated molecules adding together. We call these small, unsaturated molecules monomers. And when these monomers have added together to form the polymer, the polymer itself is saturated. That means no double bonds. Naming polymers is dead easy. You simply put poly on the front of the name of the monomer. 
and you should be aware that polymers are made of groups of atoms repeating over and over again. These are called repeating units. And if you know what the repeating unit is in a polymer, you can work out what the monomer was. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.